Thanks for staying with us. Now, infrastructure is important for faster economic growth, elevation of poverty, overall upgrade on the living standards in any country, Adef adequate infrastructure in the form of roads and railway, transport system, ports, power, airports, and their efficient working is also needed for integration of the Nigerian economy with other economies of the world. A distinct feature of infrastructure is that whilst the demand supply gap in some sectors in Nigeria can be met by importing those missing components, the deficiency of the infrastructure cannot be made up through imports. Babatunde Raji Fashola, SAN, is a Nigerian lawyer and politician who is currently the Federal Minister of Works and Housing. He served two terms as Governor of Lagos State. In 2015, he was appointed by President Muhammad Buhari to be the Minister of Power, Works and Housing. Having served that tenure, he then was reappointed Minister of Works and Housing. Now remember, you can join this conversation. Tweet at us at Plus TV Africa or at Ways Show Africa One with the hashtag Ways, or you send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081-803-84663. Thank you so much for joining us, Honorable Minister. Good evening. Thank you very much. It's an honor to have you here this evening. Pleasure is mine. All right, so um, because we have little time and we have a lot to cover, we'll go straight into the conversation. Um, first of all, Nigeria, every time the rains come, we just see a whole new Nigeria with our roads. Right. Because we want to start with the road networks first before we move into housing. <laughs> so um, what has been the major challenge, you know, dealing with the infrastructure, especially the road infrastructure in Nigeria? Okay, thank you. Uh, I think the first thing to start is that during the rainy season that we are now is mixed blessings for farmers, fishermen, those who own hydropower plants. This is a good season for construction company. Those who are into transportation, those who are managing transport logistics, and for people like me, is not a very pleasant season. And so while we're dealing with rain, um, some parts of the world are dealing with monsoon. In the next few weeks, it will be hurricane season in another part of the world. Early in December, January, it was winter in some parts of the world. And they, they are not nice weather to operate in. So let's just know that this is a season. And there are some particularly challenging roads. And um, I see some of them on my Twitter handle. Uh, roads like uh, Lagos, Abelkuta, um, roads like uh, um, Odupani to Calabar, roads like Benin to uh, Auchi, roads like Cham to Numa on the Gombeyula Highway. And we had a plan to make this rainy season better. And you might recall I was on tour in the first quarter of the year, and then we suddenly had to stop because of COVID. Here we are, the problem with all those roads, and Lagos by that degree, I must mention, we have contracts on all those roads as I speak. But the problem now is the gap between the resources to fund them. So contractor sees the budget, one billion, he does one billion work, he stops. So some of those roads now are now going into the Sukuk. We've raised, I think, uh, 162 billion from the Sukuk. We'll see how much we get and we'll see how that helps to manage the rainy season. But beyond the rainy season is that we need resources to complete those roads. Um, let me also say that those are some of the roads that are in the eye of the storm because they're a problem at this moment. Of course, there are other roads that have been completed, still going on, and there's improvement. So I like the way you frame the subject tomorrow the future of infrastructure. And I think that Nigeria's infrastructure looks bright. You will see that the government is borrowing a lot of money or some amount of money, and that is raising concern in the public. Yeah. The concerns are legitimate. But again, it's, um, it's a choice between a rock and a hard place. Mm. If you have to fix that infrastructure, you don't have the resources, you borrow, invest, and tomorrow will be better. Because as you said in your opening statement, infrastructure just makes the quality of life better. Absolutely. Business is more efficient. Everything is more efficient. Mm -hmm. Let me close my opening, therefore, by saying that I'm not the only minister 
responsible for Nigeria's infrastructure. <laughs> Rotimi Amechi is responsible for rail. Yeah. Hadi Sirika is responsible for aviation. Um, uh, Pantami is responsible for the broadband. There is a broadband plan yeah. so that you and I can talk more efficiently and effectively and do other things, healthcare support, education support. So we're really not close to 80,000 kilometers of broadband. So there is work in progress. So the future I see uh, is a better future when all of this starts to work. But it is now being attended to. And that is very important. We neglected this for a while. This didn't happen under the Buhari administration. <laughs> but what is different under the Buhari administration is that there is a focused commitment mm. to investing in infrastructure. Absolutely. Every time you talk to President Buhari, he says to us, he says, look, ministers, if we solve infrastructure, Nigeria will get on with their lives. And I agree with him entirely. So that commitment is there. Absolutely. All okay. right. So I have seen, uh, Honorable Minister, sir, I have seen um, a video of the work that um, has been going on, Kanima Jugri Road, Enugu, um, Enugu Oka Road, even through to Onisha and a couple of others. However, I do have a particular concern, which a lot of um, fellow Nigerians would agree with me, that it's as if we wait for the roads to get completely dilapidated, such that there are accidents and even people get to the level of cursing out the government, which is bad, but a lot of, a lot of Nigerians do it before uh, any attention is given to the roads. Why is that exactly? Why is there such a long delay before action is taken on our roads? The answers lie in a clear understanding of Nigeria's history. Now, when I was a teenager in the 70s, there was a massive commitment to infrastructure. Third Milan was, was being built. Lagos Ibarra was being built at that time. The Tinkan Island port was being built at the time. At least that's as far as those of us in Lagos saw. Lagos Badagri was built when I was a teenager. So after that period, things just slowed down. And we went into the political era of 1993. We spent six years fighting political battles to the, for the restoration of democracy, which development took place at that time. But during that period, many more people were being born. Many businesses were opening. So it's all come back to haunt us. I remember in 2005, Nigeria had saved some substantial amount of money, but we were also owing external creditors. So our, this, our question then was, our challenge was, do we pay creditors or do we fix the infrastructure? We opted to pay creditors $12 billion. Let me repeat that. We opted to pay creditors $12 billion. If we had put that money in our infrastructure, at the time, we'll be telling a different story. It was around that 2005 that Dubai was building all of his now famous infrastructure. So, but you now have a president who says, I don't really, really lose sleep about what it costs. We need to do this now. Otherwise, it's going to get more expensive. So if we borrow now, our economy will get better. Productivity will improve. Our competitiveness will be better. And as our economy grows, we can pay the debt back. But we paid debt at the time, we borrowed again, but we didn't invest. So, and if you followed what we did last week on a webinar, we are now planning road management. Well, we launched what we call Highway Development Management Interface. The acronym is HDMI. So we're starting with 10 roads first, 2,000 plus kilometers, getting people to form joint ventures, to manage the road so you have a construction company, provide rest houses, do some tolling where it is possible, where there's an alternative route, do rest, uh, rest houses like you see all over the world. If you die for three, four hours, you rest, you check your tires, you fill up your car, you eat, you refresh, do cleaning, signage, lighting, and ambulance services. So we've started that. So you will see the kind of maintenance that you were talking about in the fullness of time. What is important for me is not whether it is finished in the Buhari era. It is that Nigerians must now say this commitment must never stop. Uh -huh. It doesn't matter who becomes president. That's the continuity, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and the Honorable Minister, um, when we were going to, when this topic was sent to me, the first thing I did was I did a kind of research into the Western world. What, what, what are they doing that is working? And I stumbled on Singapore. 
The kind of approach they use in Singapore is to involve private companies that work for their taxes. So what they do is, they input, I think I will have that model in Nigeria. So my question is why have private companies not um, taken advantage of this? And what they do particularly is that instead of paying taxes, private companies work, they, they use that money, they utilize it towards public infrastructure and they don't end up paying taxes. And I know there's something like that, um, it was in 2019, it's called the Refurbishment Investment Tax Credit Scheme, which was an executive order for 10 years. So I'm surprised why, because if we're talking of funding, this is, a part, this is how, part of how the government can unbundle. So why have the private companies in Nigeria not taken advantage of this? Or is it just that they are not aware of it? Okay, uh, let me try and answer that question. You see, when you are comparing Nigeria to other countries, please try and compare apples and apples. Mm. Singapore is a nation state. In two hours, I can tour the whole of Singapore. I can drive from Singapore's entry point to its end in two hours. Mm. Drive. It's a nation state. It's a very small state. The small island. Okay. So its needs are different in terms of size from what we need. Now, Nigeria has four major ports, Apapa, Wari, Portakot, and Calabar. It has five international airports. Singapore has only one. And some of the Nigerian com com uh, countries, African countries we compare ourselves to, they don't have the size or the capacity or the that we have to deal with one airport. How many of them have more than one seaport? But these were very good seaports and airports when they were built. We have outgrown them. So the expansion didn't happen on time. But it is happening under this president. Enugu is under, under re renovation. And, and, and East, uh, Lagos East. Uh, you just heard a thing on Tuesday or Wednesday last this week. We announced the extension of the Lagos runway by another 300 meters so that it is able to cope with bigger aircraft. So I, I, I make no exaggeration when I say this president understands infrastructure, he is committed to it, and he will get it. Now, in terms of tax for infrastructure, this president has already signed an order allowing companies to invest in infrastructure in advance and claim it by by tax. So that is what the Dangote Group is using to build their Papa to Wushoki Expressway. They are also using it on the Obajan Akaba route. There are 19 other routes that are going to be included as we go on. The Bodo Boni Bridge, which had been awarded since 1977 and was never constructed, it failed three times, is now being constructed because the NLNG is using this tax credit. But what we have to do is a lot. And then private companies are there to make profit and do business not to build social infrastructure. So this president is harnessing all of his options. He's using the sukuk, he's using taxes, he's using some dividends from social investment infrastructure, uh, social invest, Nigerian Sovereign Investment Authority, he's using tax credit, but it's just a lot at the same time. But it is his commitment and the commitment of the team that he has put in place that is making this seem difficult. And that is why I say, I like the topic, tomorrow's infrastructure. Tomorrow's infrastructure, this generation will see roads linked by rail, will see rail linked to airports, will see broadband that is real time and really, really very efficient. Because all of the pieces are already being constructed. So it is just to put them together and finish them. That is the challenge we have now. Honorable Minister, I must commend um, all the things that you have mentioned. I particularly like the future that you have for this country. And I do hope that we can all see that with you because it does look very blissful. From here, we probably cannot see it. But I like the thought process and all the things that we're doing to raise alternative funds to make sure that we actualize this. Now, my question is this. Now, in the past, it's been known that state governments have um, kind of mended or um, participated in maintaining the federal roads and then they get refunded for it but recently you know the federal executive council has come out to say that's going to stop 
there will be no more refund. And I think that you're an excellent person to answer this because some quarters have said that this would not help. It will worsen the state of the road. Now, why do I say you're excellent? Because you have been a state governor and now you are in the federal government. So what is your take? Do you think that this is a positive or a negative move? Okay, so you're right. I was a governor. I intervened on the Lagos Badagri Road because it had become a municipal road. People needed to pass through a Mall to get to Orile, to get to Festa, to Satellite, and to get home. Otherwise, I would have ignored it. But I did it because it was affecting my people and a couple of other federal roads like that. Now, so that should have been done by the federal government of that time. And this is part of the historical side that I related earlier. So this kind of problems occurred in all the other states. So... The state governors did it. The federal government at that time chose to take $12 billion and go and pay foreigners instead of investing it at home. So this president inherited all that and the debt. Now, that is part of the debt we are borrowing money to now pay. So people must understand when we are discussing, oh, this government is borrowing. This president said, I will pay all the debts that my predecessors incurred through the states who intervened in the rules. But after paying the debt, please leave my road alone. Go and do your own road. Because there is 200,000 200, kilometers of road network nationwide. Federal government owns about 35,000 of that network. Yeah. The remaining of the 200,000, if you take 35,000 out, belongs to the state and the local government. Have they finished their own route? Certainly not. Mm. But many of them intervened in roads that were critical. So the federal government now says, the president says, I will pay what I owe, but don't touch my roads again. You go and do your road, I will do my road, your roads will link to my highway, and Nigeria should be in a better place. Okay, so Honorable Mister, I, 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 I love that you, keep, you kept emphasizing in your conversation that, um, what is it called? You like the, 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 future. the future, the future, the topic, the future, and that's what we truly want to concentrate on. So I will be wondering that if everything were to be in place, you know, do we see a future where our politicians will stop campaigning with roads and uh, <laughs> building of roads and building of um, what's it called? But I think we'll go on a short break. Um, when we come back, we'll still have the honourable minister with us. Please stay with us. We'll be right back. <laughs> 